Welcome everyone to another trailer to film. This is where I take scenes from the trailer and I talk about it. That's it. And today we're going to be talking about scary stories that tell in the dark. Try saying that five times fast. So Scary Stories is a film based off of three books that tell various random stories in an anthology-like fashion and adopted into one film. Mind you, not all of the stories are in this film, just key specific ones that I think get the creative spooky juices flowing. Anyway, the plot of this film is pretty basic, and one that you've probably heard many times before. When four kids travel to a house that has been abandoned for years, they travel inside to find a book filled with scary stories. Little do they know, they have awakened something vengeful, and new stories begin to write themselves, preying upon the kids one by one. When I heard that they were making a film out of these three books, of course I was skeptical, but above all else, I was excited. I am a big fan of the scary stories that tell in the dark, and I own all three of them, but sadly they're all holographic ones and not the originals, but hey, they're still amazing nonetheless, and I love them. To watch the trailers over time, I seriously loved how they unveiled each creature that would be featured in the film. The practical work looked amazing. The teens didn't look out of place and seemed like they could be rather likable. So how could they get this wrong, right? Well, they didn't. Not at all. And they found a creative way to incorporate these stories with the best circumstances to make it an effective horror movie. It's not without flaws, though, and we'll get into that later. But jumping into the first scene that stood out to me is... Eat it, Harold. I took my girlfriend Diana with me uh, as well as our Doctor Who blanket because knowing her she would need it because it gets awfully cold in the theater. But that's not what the blanket was used for. No sir, no 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 no. Her face was plowed into it, missing half the scares because she's a big damn scaredy cat. I told you I was! But you missed half the movie. Okay, it was more than half the movie for sure. Maybe. And Needless to say, this is one of the scares that is set up rather than conjured from the book. In this small town, Harold is one out of the two things already existing and end up being used from the book when the story begins to tell its tales. Which is why I found very clever about this movie and how each creature or entity appears or is conjured beginning to terrorize these kids. Speaking of the kids, I found the chemistry between each and every single one of them actually well, mostly believable. The only one I, I had issues with was the football kid, Tommy, who was a little too detached from the situations and felt a little bit mindless as each scene he was in passed on. Stella, played by Zoe Coletti, is a strong lead as she tries to sort out her own personal problems as the terror becomes more and more prominent. And she commands the scene with great emotion, great delivery, and intensity. Chuck, played by Austin Zager, I'm gonna apologize up front for not getting your name right at all, does a fine job being the comic relief when the intensity hits and gives us chances to have a sigh of relief when things are calm, also when the tension starts building, but he adds just enough and then takes a back seat when he needs to when things get out of control and when things are very questionable. August, played by Gabriel Rush, is more or less the moral compass of these friends and provides a grounded perspective, adding to the scares when that logic is quite literally blown wide open. Ramon Morales, played by Michael Garza, is the outsider of this small town who helps the group get through these grueling, unexpected moments, but has issues of his own. Don't want to forget the actress who played Ruth, Natalie Ganshorn, who, limited in her role, does give us the biggest iconic scare in the film. Overall, I found the cast believable, likable, somewhat unlikable, with great equal balance of what you should and should not care about. The humor is on point, and I found myself laughing when I needed to and being shocked and scared at the right times. I enjoyed the build-up and the execution of each scare, for the most part, and found myself thoroughly entertained by this. One of the things I look forward to when watching a horror film is how they present the scares. Give me a hammy way to bring it all together to excuse the scares, but it's how you execute the horrors and await to see what really goes down. There is one effective scene in this that I absolutely loved, and that had a lot to do with this. It's a corpse looking for her missing toe. <laughs> the best 
best scare of the movie. The most iconic probably goes to the boil on Ruth's face. Not scary, but more of a body horror aspect that makes you cringe. And the most creative probably goes to Harold, and if lastly, the weakest, sadly goes to the pale lady. But it was probably the most interesting one. So I've done enough praises. Let's talk about some flaws that I couldn't help but notice. In terms of pacing, the film does have some issues with how some scenes unfold. One particular scare I couldn't help but notice was our main characters trying to rescue someone else. Once this scene was over, it was placated ineffectively with grim results but it was just these four characters in the same room. Several shots established this, until the very last one, suddenly, a quite a few characters are behind our main character with no build-up as to, oh, other people are coming. Sure, it's a nitpick and things can happen within the scene without build-up and bam, there they are, but it sort of took me out for a few seconds. I can kind of see some people finding issues with the adaptations if they are fans of the books and what they do with said creatures. They can keep the concepts really good and they do keep a lot of them intact, like with Harold, the Pale Lady, and a few others that I haven't mentioned, but they do depart from this and how they are used after being introduced. It's only a flaw for some, and others probably will find it fine. Ultimately, it's one that one time I can't shut my brain off to a three-book anthology series that I adore so much being adapted into one film. Guys and gals, ultimately, in the end, I enjoyed Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. It was funny, it was creepy, effective in some scares. It does drag a little bit, but I was really just happy that they took inspiration from Stephen Gamel's artwork and stayed true to most of Schwartz's short stories. I loved the characters, loved the design, the look and feel which reminded me of strange Stranger Things meets Inkheart. Strange set of movies to compare, but that's how it feels. For that, I liked Scary Stories and would own it on DVD. Alright, so Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, what did you think of it? I would love to talk with you about it. If you've got a second, of course, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're new here, I do movie and TV show reviews. Check out those if you're interested. Be sure to turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything. Check out the description box for more. And I hope you have a fantastic and wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, and...